All right, I'm not trying to be some sort of fear monger, glass half empty, but I do remember last year. I mean, we were down 15 points in the matter of a couple of weeks. Anything in the technical setup, we've got the S&P 500 chart first, that indicates to you there is any kind of a risk of last year happening this year. You know, Brian, it's a completely different picture. It's 180 degrees different this year for what we had last year. I would call this Movember at this point in time with the S&P 500 having uh, appreciated 3.4% just in November alone. And now as you look at the overall chart here for the for the S&P 500, and I see this continual pattern just continuing to see this uptrend. And we continue to see the overall breadth of this market expanding. As I go through our work, Brian, the breadth is expanding. The number of new highs versus new lows inside of our work continues to improve. There is nothing to suggest at this point in time that this market's going to roll over. We've now just finally started to clear those highs around 3126 mm -hmm. and we just continue to move higher we've pushed through our objective for this year but again as i'm starting to think about next year i still see more upside in these you do numbers. was this was this a big deal this breaking out right here the clear buttons down there by the way absolutely Absolutely. I do think that is kind of a big deal that we broke well, out is. from there. And I do continue to think that we are going to, as we break out from here, we're starting this another leg up. And there's going to be more room for this ultimately to work as we move into 2020. Mm -hmm. Again, you know what the I love is improving. Not only a great chart, but you told me how my Telestrator works. <laughs> That's something. All right, let's take a look at the Russell 2000. Small caps, which were kind of ignored at the beginning of the year, they seem like they're, they're, they're also on their way up. Absolutely. And again, looking at the Russell 2000, this to me is a great sign for this market, for the health of this, because we had been stuck essentially in a consolidation range. And now just here, we are finally starting to break out to new highs. So again, the breadth is improving. A lot of these small and medium sized banks are starting to really participate again as interest rates are still mm -hmm. low at this point in time. And we're starting to see the, the overall multiple for those stocks really start to participate. So with this breaking out, we got to start to be thinking about the old highs coming into play here. So that's still a lot of momentum in a lot of stocks. In the small caps. In the small mid cap names. I want to talk about next individual equities. And the first one is arguably the most important stock in America because it's the, the highest price stock in the Dow. Of course, this is Boeing. And we know, of course, all the issues that Boeing's had with the 737 MAX, congressional hearings, et cetera. But from a technical perspective, you're starting to see some new signs of investor interest in BA. Absolutely. And when I look at the chart itself, we've been in this essential large consolidation range for this stock for quite some time, whereas a lot of other stocks have already been trending higher and breaking out. And now we're at a point in time where we're starting to retest the upper end of this range. And I would not be surprised to see it break out in early. What, what are these? What's 24, 45? What are these numbers here, Craig? These are uh, multiples on the stock. So the earnings numbers have come down. So I'd put the uh, P.E. multiples in here where the stock has been. But this doesn't seem cheap. I mean, 37 times. I mean, for Boeing, with all that's going on, it doesn't appear to be an inexpensive stock. Sure, but a lot of these industrial companies, you want to buy these companies when the multiples are high. And when the earnings are compressed Why is or, that? and addressed, because you typically see a very deep cyclical cycle with these industrial companies. And when you have peak margins, peak earnings, peak revenue, you'll see that multiple actually shrink. That's where I actually get a little bit more concerned, Brian. When the stock is mm -hmm. too cheap in the industrial space, I start to be a little bit more concerned. But when these earnings mm -hmm. numbers are already fairly well, uh, you know, reflecting all the bad news, yeah. to me, it's already there. All right, let's talk about a retailer that's been hot lately. I know it's on a lot of people's wish list out there, and that is Lulu Lemon. Kind of left for dead a few years ago. The CEO was at all these problems. Sure. Man, that stock has been red hot. Absolutely. And I drew the trend lines in here. And this stock has been trending very nicely here. But let me just tell you this. I was at the Mall of America just over uh, on uh, Black Friday, and I got to tell you. The oh, yeah? Was it good, you know? The, it was good. <laughs> the Lulu store was packed. Was it? Absolutely packed. So you're not just doing technical analysis. You're literally doing on-the-ground well, eyeball analysis of Lululemon. You know, Peter Lynch, you know, you got to see what's happening out there in the markets. And when you whack, walk past these companies at the Mall of America, you can see who's busy, who's not, yeah. where the lines are very large. And let me tell you, the lines were huge at this gigantic large new box that they just put in. Nice. I still like the trend that I see here. I see nothing changing. Higher highs and higher lows. I still want to be a buyer of this stock, and we do own that like model it. portfolio. All right, Craig, doing both work, technical and on-the-ground stuff. Craig Johnson, Piper Jaffe, great stuff.